Colonel Fletcher Prouty discusses Dealey Plaza, November 22, 1963. Colonel Prouty worked in the U.S. military for 23 years, nine years in the Pentagon from 1955 to 1963. He worked closely with many influential people including Director of Central Intelligence Alan Dulles, General Victor Krulak, and General Edward Lansdale. Colonel Prouty's work centered on special operations, the support of clandestine activities. While in the office of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, he worked with the Office of Cover and Deception. He established and was the first head of the focal point office between the Air Force and the CIA, the Chief of Team B. Here are observations he made in 1989 regarding photographs taken in Dealey Plaza. The photographic evidence as a total at that time is absolutely amazing. What various researchers have done is take all these photographs and place them in a time frame so that you can see where people standing in one place and there's the same person over here and other ones and begin to identify some of these people. So we've worked very hard on looking carefully at who is in these pictures. There are several of them that are really outstanding. And one of the most amazing is this group of these three men who the news story said had been removed from a boxcar in a rail yard right in back of Dealey Plaza and were being led from that boxcar by police to the sheriff's office and that's the end of it. The trail ends. They weren't booked. There's no record of them at all. Well, let's look at the pictures. The pictures do show three men that somebody have called tramps. Well, they got new shoes on. They are not tramps. The police that are leading them, one in front and one in back, one of them has very clearly a hearing device in his ear. And furthermore, the Dallas police don't lead prisoners into the sheriff's office. The police and the sheriff's office work together, but their jobs are entirely different. And in a sense, taking prisoners to the sheriff's office is the last place the police would take any prisoners. So all that part of it is very questionable. So when researchers had arrived at that point, one of them came to me one day and said, look, of all the pictures we've studied, this little episode of these men being marched right across the in front of the school book depository building where Oswald was supposed to have been and across the street by Dilly Plaza where the president's car had just gone into the sheriff's office. There's something wrong about these pictures. So we looked at them very carefully. And in the very first picture, in addition to the two policemen and the three tramps, as they're called, is another man and he's walking in the other direction. But the thing about it is, so that his back is more or less to the, or his side and his back is more or less to the photographer rather than face forward. There's something about it is, how is it possible that anyone at Dealey Plaza that day, and here these men are probably being marched across there five minutes after the president was killed. Everybody was running around, people were excited, sirens were blowing, and here's this man in a business suit, just as casually walking along. He doesn't even turn, he's not looking at anybody, just walking past, and he happens to be standing by these men as they're being marched. The least he would be doing is looking at these prisoners or looking at the policemen. You know, anybody would, especially at that time. This man's looking at nobody. And I recognized immediately that that man is General Lansdale. Now, Lansdale is a very interesting figure in the Kennedy era. And I know Lansdale, I've worked with him off and on from about 1952 to, to uh, well, 1963. So he retired, this is interesting, he retired from the Air Force on October 31st, 1963. Well, of course, the picture could have been a hundred other people, and I could be wrong, but I know him very well. Then I looked at the tramps themselves, and there's this strange little eye catch between this man and the first tramp coming by. In other words, the first tramp, instead of being seriously concerned about the fact that he may be charged with the murder of the president, is smiling. And the second tramp has a sort of a quizzical little look, and you can tell that he has looked at this man walking by, and he has the same kind of approach, you know, as though he's just been reassured, everything's all right. The third man happens to be in back from the camera's point of view and you don't see him at all. 
But that little bit of expression is saying an awful lot at that moment. The police themselves have expressions that indicate more that as if they were saying to somebody, say, boss, am I doing all right? You know, that kind of thing. In other words, was Lansdale walking down right in front of the school book depository building to sort of reassure some people here, maybe his employees or somebody that's working for him? What's the significance of that? Well, of course, that happened to be my own interpretation. The men who had brought the pictures to me hadn't the slightest idea who it was. And I decided at that moment that what was needed next was a lot of research. So I got some very clear copies of those professional pictures. These pictures were taken by a professional news cameraman. I got a clear picture. And I started mailing the picture to acquaintances of mine and acquaintances of Lansdale who knew him without any of my thoughts. I simply would send the picture and say, can you tell me what this looks like to you? This was taken shortly after the death of the president. And uh, I wonder if this picture calls anything to mind to you. You'd be amazed to find that from senior people in the government, such as Lansdale was or such as I was at the time, I got immediate confirmation. That's Ed Lansdale. Well now, I don't know why he was in Dallas. I can't go into that. But it's astounding that this man, who was Assistant Secretary of Defense for Special Operations after General Graves Erskine retired, who uh, was the man who had more or less almost single-handedly set up Diem as president of South Vietnam, who again almost single-handedly has set up President McSaisai as the president of the Philippines, who was considered probably the most significant person in the U.S. military, U.S. government on the subject of counterinsurgency, civic action, special forces, Green Beret troops. He had written the, he had written the, the, the books uh, that the Green Berets used in their courses down at Fort Bragg. What could have been his role at that time? I had a very personal interest in that because only uh, a month or two before that, Lansdale had met me in the halls of the Pentagon and said that he had arranged for me to go as a escort, military escort officer with a VIP party to the South Pole. And it happened that I left for the South Pole on about November 10th or something like that, and that I was in New Zealand on the way back from the South Pole when I heard about President Kennedy being killed. Why Lansdale asked me to go to the South Pole, I have no idea. Or was there some connection between this role that he may have been playing in Dallas and the fact that he would just as soon I be out of town? And I reflected on that, especially when I began to realize that almost all of Kennedy's cabinet was out of town, that some 45 officials with the cabinet were also out of town in Honolulu and on their way to Tokyo. They were actually on their way to Tokyo when the president was killed. And over the years, I have made a study of how many people central to the inner workings of the secret government of this country had been moved out of Washington at that time. It's a very, very interesting subject. I wish I could answer it. I don't know how to answer it. I'm sure the picture is Lansdale. Others are sure it's Lansdale, and I have to leave it there. Colonel Fletcher Prouty and General Victor Krulak both worked with General Edward Lansdale in the Pentagon. Both men identify him being in Dealey Plaza November 22, 1963. General Lansdale specialized in political psychological warfare operations and manipulation of governments. He worked for Alan Dulles, the Director of Central Intelligence. Although his cover story title was Air Force Colonel and later General, he was always working for the CIA. The photo of him reveals deep involvement with certain members of the CIA in the planning, removal, cover story, and cover-up of the assassination of President Kennedy in Dallas on November 22, 1963. Planning and cover story for such manipulation of government personnel was Lansdale's forte. Documents shown here are available at www.prouty.org.